A very good evening to you. It is me, Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live on the big one. We're live on Twitch. We're live on Facebook. And, of course, we're live on LinkedIn and YouTube. These are the big ones. We're also live, very much so, on TikTok. So we've just been joined by our wonderful TikTokers. How good is that? Absolutely amazing. Now, lots and lots of wonderful chat from you. Friday night, nothing gets past me, you know. That's just how it goes. And you can come on and have a right good chat. We like that. That will be wonderful. So feel free to come on and chat. Who's calling? You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? It's Kareem Scotty. Oh, Kareem, well done, sir. A happy Thursday night to you. <laughs> Thank you, you too, Scotty. For some reason, I feel this is Friday. I don't know what's gone on. It's a long weekend. Long, long weekend. weekend? Absolutely, yes, indeed. Holiday weekend. Yes, off to Carlisle tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. You're off to Carlisle. Yes. What a fine part of the world that is, Kareem. I know. I'm going to be looking at places that you've suggested to walk. Yes. Uh, I just hopefully it'll be nice and dry this weekend. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, um, go out the Brampton Road and look for a sign to Talkin' Tarn. Talkin' Tarn. So T-A-L-K-I-N. Talkin'. And Tarn, as in a small Cumbrian loch, T-A-R-N. Right. So lovely little freshwater loch is uh, to put it in Scottish language. I, I think I've been to that actually. It's a, it's a walk around. There's a path all the way around it. That's the one, Kareem. So you've done I, that one, and you've done the Gelt Woods. I haven't done the Gelt Woods yet. That's right. That's one I need to do. That's another beauty, yes, and the dogs will love that. You can get part. Yep, I'll, I'll have a look at that after on the maps. And yes, so that's, you, you go off down the A69, the uh, the Newcastle Road, and uh, down past Warwick Bridge, and then out onto the road, and just watch, because um, there's lots of cameras and things, and then um, once you're through Warwick Bridge, you go out onto the Newcastle Road, and Gelt Woods is a right turn just off that. That's fine. Gelt Woods. And you'll get part there and the dogs will just love it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. I've got lots of people, Kareem, before we start. Hello from Bonnie Dundee in yeah. Scotland. Hello from England, says Tammy. Where in England are you, Tammy? Lots and lots of people. Scotty Boy, good evening, says the wonderful Beachy Beachy. And these are all on TikTok. Hello, TikTokers. Absolutely. Now, Kareem, what are we talking about tonight? Two wee things that I've just been reading briefly today and just to get people's opinions on and yourself. The first one is regarding a topic you've talked about quite a lot, Brexit, and at the moment that we were promised X, Y, and Z, and now petrol stations are having to close because they don't have enough petrol. Correct. Now, a lot of this, people will say, is down to the pandemic. But to be absolutely honest with you, um, I think it's down to Brexit, to the fact that thousands and thousands and thousands of European lorry drivers have gone home. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I think it's as simple as that. And I think it would be a nice touch if the government just came clean about all that, because the people know that anyway. Scotty, if that was the Scottish government, there would be absolute civil war. Oh, there would be hell on. Yeah. There would be hell on. And, and I think we need to say, why is there hell on if it's the Scottish government? This is the Westminster government and Scotland suffering, uh, you know, as a result of being dragged, kicking and screaming out of the European Union. Yeah. And, and with the energy prices as well, it's going to affect everybody um, that's coming in like the gas and electricity so that that's increasing as well I think there'll be a lot of people getting emails shortly in the coming weeks saying because of shortages etc um, or whatever wherever they buy their fuel from um, that is yeah but you see probably again had we been in Europe we could have had more clout and we could have said, right, we'll not be paying that for the energy. We'll get it from somewhere else ourselves. We'll get it from somewhere in Europe. Well, I, 
Yeah. We'll not be getting it from China. We'll get it from Russia or we'll get it from Scotland. Scotland can produce uh, energy for up to 35 million people. Can. So why we've got a shortage? There shouldn't be a shortage. Correct. Because I'll tell you what else we've got. We've had hydroelectricity, you know, since the 1950s. You know, all that water that comes tumbling down the mountainsides of Scotland. Hydroelectricity. And we were supposed to get cheap energy then. If you stay in a hydro area, I think it's probably one of the more expensive ones. So where have the calculations gone wrong? So would that be down the big stations? I'm just trying to think two of them. Is there one at the top at Loch Lomond? Loch Sloy, Loch Lomond, yes. You've got their Kruachan. Uh, another one round at Oban, mm -hmm. you know. So, so you've 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 got all these things. I mean, there's a lot of uh, hydroelectric dams about. The other thing is, I did suggest. I think I've said this to you before. When they got rid of Long Annet, the coal-fired power station used to see when you came over Fife. Um, you know, they should have mothballed that. Remember, we're also missing Chapel Cross. You know, these, these, and I think we're missing Inverkip, and are we missing Hunterston as well, you see? So they, they, they should take more care. They should say, although they're coming to the end, what are we replacing them with? Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's all very well pushing and pushing and pushing the green agenda, but in actual fact, we do need to survive as well. Absolutely, yes. I think there's another station, is at New Larnock, the country park there, I think it's Scottish Power, I think they've got down there. But that was my first point, Scott, it was regarding obviously with the shortage of petrol. Now, when that really hits, that's going to hit a lot of people in society. If they oh yes, A to B. shortage of fuel and of course it will make it more and more and more desirable. And then, but if you're not careful, the greed in shoving up, I mean, what is shoving up the wholesale energy prices? We need to get behind that. Yeah, yeah. And I think, when, if you remember the last time there were shortages in the supermarkets. Yes. Um, because, I, I can't remember what year it was, but when there was a lot of uh, strikes, uh, when the vans were cutting off places down in England, yeah. petrol couldn't get anywhere. Uh -huh. Prices in supermarkets went through the roof. That would be 2000. My mother died in September the 13th, and we weren't sure if we would have enough fuel to take her to Argyle. Goodness. Yeah, I can remember that, and that was uh, September 2000. So 21 years ago, Kareem. And then in the 70s, you see, I think, I, I'm very suspicious. I think everybody likes to give everything a good hike because they're already saying in the national news that when these prices go up, it's highly unlikely they will come down again. And if you look at it, the competitors are dropping out the game. They're falling like flies. Yeah. So you're yeah. going to end up with probably, um, you know, a monopolic situation. Fine. Yeah, well, they, they might be, they might not be. I mean, some of them might go under and get swallowed up by the others. As I, um, I, I remember the radio coming on in the morning. It would come on because I'd set it to do so. And uh, I remember it coming on and a chap uh, was saying about companies being bought up. And they said, I mean, do you feel you're a target? And he said, well, there's always someone trying to eat your lunch. That's a good way. I thought it was rather a nice one, that. So I think what's happening is that there will be people taking great advantage of the situation and trying to eat someone else's lunch. Lunch, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, not good. And you I see, Kareem, another good. thing. Sorry to, 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 no, to no. interrupt, but another thing that's interesting um, is that you can really only do something very specialized if you know about it. Like you can only go to war with another army. Otherwise, nobody knows what they are doing. You can only sell weapons to people who are trained in weaponry. You can only, you can only, uh, you know, have a game of football with other footballers. A game of rugby with other rugby players, a game of tennis with another tennis player. So what I'm saying is you need the specialists so you can really, the best people to run an energy company would be another energy company. Uh-huh. You know what they're doing. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, because otherwise, you know, if 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 a general wanted to talk to the enemy general, he's the only one that would know what the other general was saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> you yeah. see? So it's a bit strange. It's like you can only have politics, you know, you can only have an opposition because you've got another political party there. Otherwise, they don't know the procedure. They don't know what's going on. You know, when I was trying to raise funds for radio stations, uh, you know, I knew what was going on, but the people I was talking to didn't. And that was a problem for me. Yeah, that must have been frustrating. Well, yes, because you'd explain, they're going, ah, I, think, I think we'd need to say no on that because, yes, we, we, we don't, we really only go into stuff that we understand. You know, and of course you could do very well. I mean, if the if the original people, the Bernsteins and the Grades and all these people had not gone into ITV, then we, you know we wouldn't have had almost seventy years of entertainment. Yes, absolutely. Yes, a second point quickly, uh, Scotty, is I know that you don't like raising about COVID, etc. No, we but tend not to, because I think that the the mainstream media can discuss all that. All you know? I don't know about the, the one thing that I think I think is good, which is regarding it's on the first of October that you'll be able to download your app onto your phone, which is like proof uh, if you have to get into venues, right? Football matches. Uh, I think it's over ten thousand or whatever it is. You have proof now, uh, like other countries have that, where you've you've had your vaccine. On your on your phone, excellent. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, that is that is the way to do it. Yeah, but the, my my issue is when you're reading about it again, yet yeah, on social media, there's so many people complaining about well, it's taking away your human rights, it's forcing you to get the fat, the jag if you don't want to get it. And I'm thinking, well, we need to look at the bigger picture here. Yes. Yes. I mean, there's lots. I mean, the bigger picture is the way forward with everything, Kareem. You know. Yeah. What's going on? And that's why I always usually, uh, you know, cite several sources before I come out with something. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you're not just saying, yeah, but I heard in the such and such. And I can remember people haw-hawing, nationalists haw-hawing because I'd quoted something and uh, it was, I think, in one of the big papers. And they said, oh, well, they would say that, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, they're the source. I said, no. They're the publisher. Uh Uh You see what I mean? The source is somebody else altogether. Uh Uh From that point of view. I just want to to put that across, because I I do think, I know there might be some people that are not for it, but for me personally speaking, I don't see an issue. Everybody has lots of apps on their phone. Yes. Your phone can be traced very easily if people are worrying about, you know, about tracking. Well, your phone's already... You know, with your, your is it the, the, I forgot the button at the top, your, what do you call it, your GPR, your, what is it? Yes, called? your GPS. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot of things your phone's already got that people seem to think that if you put all these other stuff on, oh, everybody's watching, and it's just, it's conspiracy theories. Conspiracy it? theories, too many of them. Lovely talking to you, Kareem. Have a great time at Carlisle, and let me know what you think of the Gelt Woods. I'll phone you tomorrow night. 10 o'clock, the big, the big talk show, the big live show in England. Fantastic. <laughs> Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo. Safe Dinky-doo. journey, Kareem. All the very best. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. It's Scotty McClue's phone in. We're live the internet phone in. We've got lots and lots of beautiful TikTokers tonight. A guy's going, why he's sweating? Say, because it's very hot in studio. There we go. It's been a while, Scotty. Yes, Brandon. Hello, pal. Dinky-doo. Dinky-doo, Scotty. It was September 2000. Correct, Maria. You're 100%. Welcome to our TikTokers. Welcome to our YouTubers. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? I love TikTok. I love TikTok. Thank you very much for that. So do I. There we are. Tremendous stuff. Now, uh, where are you living now? Rebel by blood. We're back in Scotland. Pro Tem. To the telephones. Lots to talk about. Right. Good evening, says D. Gourley. Dinky-doo. Good evening, D. Dinky-doo, says Dave Deprave. 
We're being ripped off by all the big knobs, says Michael Holmes. Alex Robertson, good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Alex. One of our finest actors. There's just no shortage of fuel. It's just not being delivered. Correct. I'm getting an electric car, but don't ask me anything about it. Don't buy anything until you know about it, Suzanne. Dinky-doo, Scotty, Robert Rovers. Suzanne, get well, absolutely, 100%. Guys, we're massive on TikTok right now. Incredible. Can I have, I've got 1,000 likes. Can everybody watching go to the YouTube channel and subscribe and join us on the phone in? You'll see the URL right below my bio in front of your face. Click on that and subscribe. We need to get YouTube moving. If you're a Twitch person, Scotty underscore McClue, get yourselves onto that right now. And lots and lots of likes. Tap, 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 tap. I popped up last Sunday lunchtime and got 40,000 likes in just over half an hour. How good is that? Uh, dinky do, Scotty says Roberts. Absolutely lovely to have you with us. And a big dinky do to you. Well, good day, sir, says Rebel. Beam me up, Scotty. How was your day? Good evening, my friend. Uh, there's a poor soul says, who are you? There we are. John Boy from Port Glasgow is in the house. Why he sweating, says Lols. Because he very hot in studio, Lols. There we are. Thanks, Karim. I'll take a limb sip. That should help me. Yes, indeed. Bit of advertising there. Hi from Peter Heed. I fit like for Peter Heed. We love you in Peter Heed, I'll tell you. Chuck Murray says Granny Vandy. Granny Andy, thank you do. Thank you. Karim has joined us on TikTok. TikTok is massive. Can I thank all you beautiful TikTokers for all your lovely, lovely gifts? Thank you. Hi from Milton Keynes. Dean, we love you in Milton Keynes. That's excellent. There we go. Dinky do. Get to your telephones and let's hear from you as well, of course. Lots to talk about and so little time to do it in. Always the problem, isn't it? Always a little bit of a problem. Now, tell everybody on TikTok about Scotty McClue. Get following on TikTok. We need to build all our followers up and find out what is what. Rebel says, I'm from Mississippi in the USA. We love you in Mississippi in the USA. Dinky-doo. Follow us as soon as you can. Guys, can everybody share the phone in on their social media? Get sharing if you're on Facebook. If you're on, uh, you can follow me on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, then subscribe and tap the bell. Let me know when Scotty McClue goes live. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's David Hibbert. You know what David, how lovely to hear from you, dinky doola. I know it's been a few days because I, 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 I didn't know any internet the last few days. But you've been having a lovely time. Are you in Tenerife, David? No, I was. Right, were you in Grand Canaria or somewhere like that? No, the internet in my street was actually cut off. You're oh, the internet, internet in your street in Glasgow? Yeah, and Nightswood was just cut off, yes. Nightswood, all oh, right, and you're back on now, obviously, so that's we're great. Back on, and I had to phone the company, and I had to tell you engineers, etc. Oh, no, 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 no. It was a nightmare, Scotty. I've never seen an engine with ears. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Well, that's the way you can phone McClue then. Would you like my tie tonight? Well, I was watching the back because I was right. I was going to. I can't stay warm because people want to speak. I absolutely. But don't worry about that. You're the one that's managed to get through. Well, that's true. I see it in the tonight. Yeah, you're in a different room. Yes, I'm in a different room in McClue Towers tonight. Oh, we like McClude Towers. And you can maybe see, you can maybe see just one of our fishing boats. Can you see the fishing boat there? Yes, that's the one, the fishing boat, yes. There it is, in McClude Towers. And also, the other room, you get a taxi. Yes, you get fond of it. Do you miss the portraits with the dog? Oh, yeah, that's exactly, Scotty. But, see, I love cars, like taxis. I've seen a taxi and that's right. That's well. That's not a taxi. That's actually a P thirty eight Range Rover. Is that what that is? 
Yes, and I don't know if... Are you on TikTok with me? Right, if you're on TikTok and you're into at Scotty McClue, uh, thumb through the TikTok videos and you'll see the P38 Range Rover. It's a model and the detail is superb. Uh, right, right. Didn't you know, right. Okay, I'll go to that, uh, of course, very You'll enjoy that. Right. Now, we're talking about uh, like, electric cars coming out, you know? Uh-huh. So, uh huh. So, I'll take you back to about. 20 years ago. Yes. I was, I mean, I stayed in city centre of Glasgow. Yes. Yeah, so one time, pollution, uh, I find pollution because there's years ago in my body. Right. My post, and, and, and I'm a lover. Oh, right. I was, in I was sent to hospital. I was really, really seriously ill. Oh, my. I also had, I also had uh, pneumococcal pneumonia on top of that. Oh, my goodness. You've been through the wars, my boy. Yes. Pollution is bad with cars. We understand. So the electric cars is coming in, Scott. Yes. Does that mean that the petrol will run dry in the future? Well, well, the only thing with electric cars, I mean, they've got big, expensive batteries, and a lot of these metals for the batteries have to be mined, and it's very not good for the miners mining all that stuff. And then again, the thing with electricity, as you know, it's very difficult to store. They used to call it man's silent servant. Now, um, it's very difficult to store, hence the batteries, you see. And once you use it up, how do you charge it? So you're going to need power to charge it. To How do you get the power to the sockets? You're going to have to use wind, wave... Uh, the what? Sorry, David? You know, in the future, when these, these cars are coming out in the future, okay, I'll be dead then, right? Yes. All these cars are I will be dead. I'm just putting that out. You'll not be dead. No, 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 no. We'll not be dead. But the only thing I'm saying is you can't go very far. So it sounds to me like we're going to be limited in the distances we can cover. You see, there's a difference. There's a difference going from Glasgow to London. You know, sitting in the back of a lovely big Jaguar car or something, and sort of going in some little electric car down the motorway. You know. Yeah, but all these all these electric stations is going. All these cars will be lots of pounds of driveways. These electric stations. Yes. It's going to be hectic. Absolutely you hectic. And then you're going to have to, it takes a long time to charge the car. The technology is not quite there yet. So it's very, very expensive, but it's not 100% reliable. No, not at all, Scott. You know. That's the problem you've got. I mean, so we, we, the thing is, so uh, all petrol cars will become a thing of the past. Obviously. Yes. Yes. That's what's going to happen. They're going to become a thing of the past, you see. Oh, yes. So when will this really all happen? I mean, seriously. Well, I think they're talking about things like uh, 2035. Was that the late 20, uh, you know, 35, I think. So that's another 14 years. But you see, Lord knows who will be in government by then. You might have a party that comes in, goes, we're scrapping electric cars, we're going back to diesel. We're opening up the coal mines because we've not got any lights on. We're going to, uh, you know, we're going to use petrol cars. We're going to refine it, blah, blah. You don't know. Or by that stage, we might all be living in space. Somebody goes, I haven't been to Earth for years. I See, when I came to Mars, there was only a few houses. And then, of course, it was all fields and it was all dust. And then the thing is, now we've got this lovely hoose in the big scheme in Mars. <laughs> you know, and we sometimes we go for a holiday and we cover ourselves in red dust and, oh, it's lovely. You know? So, you just don't know. And he says, I think he's, I think he's related to Uncle Jimmy. Do you remember Uncle Jimmy from the moon? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Moon, we used to call him. Aye, he was a star. I'm too unlikely with you, think I'm the same. They've got great big, 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 big,
Brain. Well, you've I got to have a wee bit of nonsense, you know. And you say, when you want to go to the Lavian Mars, where do you go? They say, you go to the Marzipan. David, have you ever heard the Scottish saying? I, I, not. Sometimes people know what you're talking about. Sometimes they don't. And yeah. it's when a couple have been going together for a while, and somebody says, "Are you, yeah. are you two going together?" They go, "No, no, we're just, we're just pals." And you say, "Well, I thought I was getting a wee whiff of marzipan there." <laughs> the wedding cake, you know. I get you. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> but some people I tell that to, and they go, "What, what are you on about?" <laughs> Have you noticed if you come out with clever stuff, you're the thicky. So if you come out with clever stuff, somebody else goes, he's an idiot. He talks nonsense. Aye, or, 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 or that rubbish. You can go down to college. I, did, I know what you mean. You know, like, I've been to London years ago, and London doesn't understand Scottish as far as I'm concerned. Aye. You know? Very so, strange. Very strange. David, an absolute joy hearing you. Yeah, and I'm so glad you're back online. Right, son, you take care. And I'll see you tomorrow. And you take great care and say hi to John. I will do. Right, bye, Scotty. Dinky-doo, Lala. There's our David. Our Dave. Fantastic. What a clever man. Put the collar volume up. Well, there we are. As far as I know, that's as high as it goes. I will check. I think that's actually as high as it goes, guys. I don't think we can get it any higher than that. But I shall certainly check and see. What is what? Are you not hearing the caller at all? There we go. It's Thursday. Honest, says Jerry. There we are. Evening all. I have the cold, says Suzanne, where we saw that. There we go. Fantastic. Now then, I found out today that Noah had three sons, Shem, Hem, and Japhath. Uh, there we are. Japhath had a fascination for cakes with orange jelly in the middle. They were henceforth known as Japhath's Cakes. We love all that. That's beautiful. Now then, oh, sorry, no advertisements. No, don't worry, Suzanne. The West Wing of McClure Towers. Absolutely. Here's um, Alice. Dinky do, Scotty. Great show. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Alice. There we are. Put the collar volume up. There we are. As far as I know, it's up. A lot of people who are spaced out. This guy, Davies, laugh makes me laugh. Everything is funny. Everything sounds fine on Twitch. Can we check YouTube, see if everything's fine on YouTube? Can we check Facebook, see if everything's fine on Facebook? Uh, who have we got here? You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hang on a wee second. There we go. Hello, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Scotty. Hello, who's that? Scotty. Who's that? Hello, how are you? Hello, who is that? Oh, it's Andrew. Andrew, lovely to hear from you, dinky do. I just need Hello. to get a handle, you see. We're wonderful, Andrew. Thank you for calling. Uh, how's, your, how's your ass for love bites? Oh, absolutely fantastic, Andrew, you know. But you mustn't judge everybody by your own standards. Right, to the telephones as quickly as possible. I can hear fine, in fact. You need to turn you down a bit, says Suzanne. Sorry, Suzanne, that was me talking up because I thought people were getting a wee bit corn beef. Everything seems to be fine on YouTube, Scotty. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Crystal clear, says Angel. Thank you. I thought so. Hello, Scotty. Tune in from Sheffield as usual, my friend. James Green, lovely to have you with us from beautiful, beautiful Sheffield, the Seven Hills. I miss it. I miss it every night. I wish there was more than one of me and I could live in Sheffield and Manchester and Carlisle and Newcastle and Glasgow and Edinburgh and Aberdeen and Perth and Dundee and the Outer Islands. Ah, oh, there we are. All good here, says Gary. Where is here, Gary? Is here YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or LinkedIn? 
Guys, if you're a Twitcher, do me a big favour, even if you're watching on Facebook or on LinkedIn, get on to Twitch. Go to at um, Scotty underscore McClue. Scotty underscore McClue. Don't go to at anything. Go to Scotty underscore McClue. Follow me on Twitch and watch the show on Twitch. Because if I can get a few more viewers, I think it's only another two or three, then we can become a Twitch affiliate. But you've got to be viewing it live. Are you with me? YouTube lol, says Gary. Gary, has everybody on YouTube subscribed? We need to start building that. Evening, Scotty, watching from Blainfield in Stirlingshire. Muzzard! We absolutely love Blainfield in Stirlingshire. And um, what was the big hotel down at the bottom? Was it the Kirk Inn? There we are. Fantastic. Which whiskey is your favourite? Well, God I likes. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I used to. And I had so many favourite whiskies. There we are. Wonderful. But tell me if you want a nice, clean, clear northeastern Speyside. Or if you want a nice, smoky, salty, malty, peaty one from the West Coast. There we are. Is that your voice, the same level as the calls? Uh, yes, it should be. Yes, YouTube is good, says Suzanne. Uh, here is somewhere else, if you're there. Absolutely fine on YouTube. Thank you, Alice. Very, very good of you indeed, top lady. Hello, Scotty, from Mike's boy from the ancient capital of Dunfermline. Now, Mickey, who sat in Dunfermline Toon and what did he do? All right, come up with that one, Mickey, and we'll just check your knowledge of Dunfermline. That's what I say to you. Thank you very much. We're fine on YouTube, according to the wonderful Alice. That's right. Scotty, great show. Give a dinky-doo to Mark and Elaine in Wishaw. Mark G in Wishaw. Dinky-doo to you. Fantastic. It's Thursday night. Nothing gets past me. You're watching Scotty McClue, hashtag Floatai, the first lord of the internet, and we are live with so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. We don't discuss anything pandemic-wise simply because the mainstream media cover all of that. So there we are. Sir Patrick Spence, Ronnie Shaw, top man. The king sits in Dunfermline Toon, drinking the blood red wine. And of course, Dunfermline, the birthplace of Andrew Carnegie, was, um, was the capital of Scotland in the days when the capital of Scotland moved about. And uh, I'll tell you a lovely story about Andrew Carnegie. Um, he used to take a shortcut to school when he was a wee bairn. And uh, he got caught by the gardener at the big house one day who said to him, you're not allowed in here. This is private property. And as you know, there's no trespass law in Scotland. And he said, this is private property. Don't ever come in here again. And threw him out. When Andrew Carnegie became the richest man in the world, he bought that house and he turned the garden into a public park. And I think that might still be known as Carnegie Park. Tell me if I'm right. You're sounding nice and loud, says the wonderful Jerry. All good on Twitch, says Anya. Anya, are you watching on Twitch? Have you followed me? Tell all your Twitcher mates that Scotty McClure is live with the phone in. Because if I can get just a handful of people watching live, right, they come and join me during the day. But if I can get them watching live, we can become a Twitch affiliate. I think I just need another two or three of you watching live. So that would be great if we can do that. Now, here we go. Ronnie Shaw, I can't advertise the whiskies, but you are, of course, correct. So there we are. These are beautiful, beautiful whiskies. I can remember going into a malt whiskey shop, and the guy behind the counter knew his stuff. And there was an American gentleman in buying whiskey, surprisingly. And the man running the shop was introducing him to all the wonderful things about Scotch whiskey and malt whiskey in particular. And um, the American, I overheard this. I, I, it filled me with pride. The, the American said, right, okay, this tastes amazing. Can you tell me, is there a whiskey between that whiskey 
and that whiskey. And the man running the shop said, there are 36 whiskies between that whiskey and that whiskey. Would you like me to name them all for you? Now, I thought that was beautiful. And the American goes, no, no, I guess, I guess I believe you. Uh, yes, David, that's what I thought. Followed on Twitch, guys. Mazod, thank you so much for following me on Twitch. We had two followers last week. The last time I looked, we had 73. Mazod, how many have I got following? Frank says, here in Australia, mainly in Melbourne, we've been having a lot of protests. What do you think? Well, Frank, I'm not going to get into the politics of that. There is going to be a bit of a backlash against everything that's happening because people feel they're being robbed of their freedom, you know? And I know it's because we've got a pandemic. I don't doubt that. But, you know, people are people. Humans are humans. You're live on Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hey, Glenn from Sheffield, Dinky Doo La. Yeah, yeah, I like your paintings, Scott. Do you like that? The fishing boats. Gorgeous, uh, Isn't that beautiful? Fantastic. Isn't that absolutely lovely? And the other one behind you as well, Scott. Yeah, you like that one as well. Which one's that one? I'll let everybody see that one. I don't know which one you're seeing. The one oh, I can't really see much of, you know, on the far wall, on the, not on the back wall, the other wall. The other wall? This one here, yeah. There, that's beautiful, isn't it? The fishing boats. Do you know, we've just had Trump is your daddy, right? Trump yeah. is your daddy from America and says, holy dinky do, it's the one and only Scotty McClue. Isn't that beautiful? From the United Donald, States of America. You think Donald Trump will get back uh, some sort of capacity? I think the American people are beginning to waken up. And I think they're realizing that they've had the wool pulled a bit with old Uncle Joe. Yeah. And I think they're looking at what they're paying for a gallon of gas at the pumps. And I also think they're realizing that if you strip out the mainstream propaganda, the Donald was quite a guy, actually. And say you strip out the whole business thing, he's yeah. very monarchical. And he actually talks incredible sense. Scotty, that's uh, con very controversial, isn't it? Well, it's very controversial, but I mean, McClue's never steered clear of controversy. Definitely not. You know, as you well know, but I think it is very controversial. And I think that the media attacked him because he was so forthright about him. Now, what president goes to a press conference... And when gets asked by a mainstream media company, goes, I don't want to talk to you. Shut your face. You're, you're fake news. Brilliant stuff. Now, it is brilliant stuff. Somebody can say, oh, no, that's a little bit rude. But is it? Just say that it is really, isn't it? He's telling it like it is. Now, what's Scotty McClue famous for? Telling it like it is. You know, so, I mean, I'm not going to change that, but I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories about a pandemic. That's where Scotty's been going on to, conversations about that have been going on way too long. Well, you look at what they're coming up with right here on TikTok. And remember, Scotty McClue is massive in America, right? Yeah. So here they are. Listen to this, Glenn. Damn right, Biden, the media, and the far left's being exposed. Okay, well said. Sleepy Joe's a nightmare, and Trump loved his country. The media don't like the truth. Trump was the man, says Lahoub over in Ireland. Damn right, Biden, the media, and the far left. I have to agree to disagree, but Trump is an absolute fruit loop. Scotty, have you just read that comment there? What was that one? COVID came from a lab leak. Yeah, well, you never know. I'll tell you what I did here tonight, that there's COVID in bats, and it's it's yeah. very similar to the one in humans. Well, Bobby's saying, basically, we're just going to get used to it. Hey, listen, I love this one, William 1-1. One, one. He's a pathological narcissist. Not surprised you endorse his antics. Now, you know, in what way has Donald Trump ever... Proved any kind of narcissistic. It's a matter of opinion, Scott. 
it's all opinion that, isn't it? And I mean, there's somebody that doesn't like him, but I think yeah. we know that weak people don't like forthright people. People speak their mind. Well, I had an argument with a guy on social media yesterday. Now, the guy actually knew a little bit of his stuff. He was making a complete and utter fool of himself. But when I looked at the post, what was really irritating him was being told by Scotty McClure what the truth was. Well, they should do it. And what they don't like is when they say, well, I suppose it's your opinion. I go, no, that's not opinion. That's fact. You'll take it into consideration, their opinion. Why? Oh, I definitely. Listen, my problem is I've been too nice to these people over the years because I can see their point of view. If, if they're not going to voice their opinion, then what, what's, what is the point? Because... This country, well, not just this country, the old world's full of opinions. Yep, here's somebody else coming back in now, Glenn. No, he's not, says A Walk With Nature. There we are. Uh, I think a Walk With Nature's telling William 1-1, one, one, continue to be a sheep. William 1-1 one, one says, Trump is addicted to attention, why? just like you. He's having a go at McClure. Scotty, why did we get into that? Oh, well, Somebody else is just following somebody's yeah. guidance. Yeah. Well, there's a guy having a go at McClure. He's likening me to Trump and he's saying yeah. that I'm addicted to attention just because I want to give the people a voice. Why do, why do we get into this? Somebody's taking a lead and then you're, somebody else is following instead of... Well, you know what I say? Yeah. Do not follow because I may not lead. Do not lead because I may not follow. Walk beside me. I think the sheep thing's a bit, you know, it's a bit weak-minded really, isn't it, at times? Jerry says here, I think I'm allowed to have an opinion. Yes, you are, Jerry. When, when, when it comes to people, they, they, they said there's too many sheep, are they just following yeah. the president, really? Just carrying on what other people want them to do. Yeah. Somebody's got to tell either, I suppose, there? There's Walk With Nature telling William 1-1, one, one, haters will be haters. I think, would you say it comes down to jealousy a little bit then? Very jealous, because Trump's a very powerful man. I mean, I, I, I thought he was going a bit over the top, but I think I was falling for some of the mainstream media. He's the only one that will clear the swamp, says Jason. Here we go. If you don't like Trump, you are a sheep to the media. Simple as. Now, here's William 1-1 one, one right now. This is typical of it. Listen to this. Psychiatrists have got together and diagnosed Trump with narcissistic personality. Right now, psychiatrists have got together is the bit that's important there. In other words... They're trying. What do you say to somebody who tells the truth? Oh, you're off your head. You're mad. You're a narcissist. Yeah, of course you do, because they think, what if the truth gets out? Yeah. I mean, what are we afraid of? What's going to go wrong if somebody says, okay, Donald's telling the truth? What is, what is the truth, though, Scott? Well, the truth, well, they used to say the truth is what you believe. But I mean, the truth is, let me give you an example of the truth. If I said to you, was Winston Churchill an outstanding prime minister? Yes or no? You think he was. If I said to you, is Winston Churchill alive or dead? Know that for a fact that he's not it's a dead. fact he's dead isn't he so we know that so there's your fact there's your opinion and it goes right back to plot and story because everything that we look at entertainment wise what happens next you you go to the theater what happens next yeah you don't know you see and that's what we're looking for and a plot and a story let me run this one past you glenn the king died. Is that a plot or a story? It's a story. Top man. The king yeah. died and the queen died of grief. Plot or yeah. story? Story. No, plot. Plot. 
because someone else turns around and goes, hang on a minute, the Queen died of grief, the Queen could not stand him. So, a plot, there's a plot afoot. What's happened to the King? Did he die or was he martyred? You're teaching me Scotty now. You see, I am, La, because you deserve the best. Nice one. Hey, I'm going to have to dash, La, because we're absolutely stood out the door. I hate the, fa I hate the fact, though, that when people put their opinions out there, then next week, what's he trying to get out? What's he or she trying well, listen, to here's William 1-1 one, one come back. If you don't believe me, I couldn't give a damn. Now, we know that's a lie. Yeah. He could care a lot. He's absolutely wounded to the quick if we don't believe him. Exactly, that's why he's fetched it up. The second you hear somebody say, I couldn't care less, they are that's passionate. Scotty, that's when it really gets on your daughter. Yeah, it? yeah. They say, you don't understand, I don't care. And you say, no. yes, you do. And then you put your feckles up then, don't you? That's it. And Angela says, that's a compliment, Scotty. I agree, Angela, that William 1-1 one, one is complimenting me. Nice one, Scotty. Listen, if all they can say about Scotty McClure is he likes attention, how pathetic is that? Anybody can say that about anybody. Aye. Oh, pathetic. Yeah, you know, we're giving the world a phone-in, absolutely scot-free. Just stay true to what you do anyway. That's what we're doing, Glenn. Scotty, I'm not, I'm not going to mind my P's and Q's, but you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. You're a top man in dinky-doo. Nice one, Scotty. Take it easy, big man. And you, Lala. Our Glenn from Sheffield. You're live on Scotty's Funny. Who's that? Hello? Hello. Hello, who's that? Hi, Scotty, it's Richard, fucking caller. Richard, how lovely to hear from you. Welcome. How are you? Very, very good. Whereabouts are you Hi. calling from? Uh, Kirkcaldy. Ah, oh, we love Kirkcaldy, the Langtoon. Uh, Ken. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, Ken, a boy that Ken's a boy who Ken's a boy who probably Ken's you. Ken Kenny. Ken Kenny and ah. Uh, Somebody told me where I used to go and drink in Kirkcaldy. We're talking 45 years ago. And it's uh, down right in the main street. And the theme used to be it was set out like an old, uh, an, a, you know, an old with beams and all that. Is it the Penny Fathom? I think that's exactly the one. And just about every day in Kirkcaldy came in. Right, right. I'm sure they um... Jim Davidson has been in there drinking on occasion. I think the person who owns up pub, Eddie Melville, as far as I'm led to believe, I think he's quite good friends with Jim Davidson. He comes up to Brilliant. Well, we'll not go into it. We'll not go into any personal stuff, but that is fantastic. The penny farthing. Yeah, so what's your, what's your thoughts on this gas shortage and... Well, I'm very, very suspicious of shortages. I'm very suspicious of something that shoves the price up and says that the price will no come down again. Because what's going to happen in Scotland, all the poor pensioners will no be putting their gas on at all. Well, Nicola Sturgis has come out and said pretty much that today. It's like be heat, heat or eat, eh? Aye, so, heat or eat. So you, you know what the Scots saw? They'll be putting on another coat and a hat and sitting in the house. And that worries me a wee bit because these souls at the, you know, in the autumn of their life, they should be able to enjoy themselves. They should be warm. Oh, 100%. I, GM. I mean, you think Kirkcaldy is ideal. When you were we, how many folk had a coal fire? Aye, everybody. Exactly. Ken. That was the main source. Ken, you walked around the tune, you saw the chimney smoking away there, you'd begin to see everybody's granny and say, oh, hello, son, come away in. You left, the the windows were running with condensation. Well, between, um, between the pits and the that done the linoleum, that was the main, that was the main jobs. That, that was their job, the mining, and uh, fantastic stuff. And the linoleum, yep. you know? I think it's, um, what do you think, Brexit? Brexit, the... Excuse me, what do you think Brexit's got to do with this? I can't help but think one Everything. Every, well, I'll tell you what it has got to do with it. You know, thousands upon thousands of truck drivers have gone back to Europe. 
Yeah, well, there you go. I'm actually in the process of putting myself through my HGV um, licences. Ken. Get myself a job. Um, I've been having years, but we're 100,000 short, apparently. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll, you'll be brought, and I hope that everybody in the Langton gets working. <laughs> because I'll tell you, you're bra, you're bra folk. Uh, Ken, uh, Ken. Ken, the Kirkcaldy folk are bra people. <laughs> and you'll get a piece uh, at their door. Listen, lovely talking to you and dinky do. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. What a top man, Richard from the Langton. History will show the election was stolen. Facts. Churchill was a functioning alcoholic. Well, was he functioning? Sometimes I wonder, because in actual fact, I don't wish to speak ill of those who have gone. But, I mean, he was a great man for kind of historical revisionism. And um, the thing about Churchill, he wasn't actually running DD at all. General Eisenhower was. What does hashtag flow time mean? Says always cars. That means hashtag first lord of the internet. Scotty McClure's official title. How good is that? What is the time, guys? How long have I been up here? There we go. That's what it's all. Churchill was a fantastic prime minister. Well, was he? There we are. Or was he a very good prime minister as a politician? William won one. You just hate no matter what great leader we are talking about. King George. King Giorgio. Giorgio. King George. Yes, very good. He was a good PM, Churchill. He was actually a very good PM, to be honest with you. And he was the Queen's first prime minister. And he had charged at the Battle of Omdurman. There we are. To everyone slagging these people off, you should try to do their job. First time shepherd, good for you. Absolutely, 100%. He was good in some aspects, but he did a lot of inhumane stuff. Well, he gassed the Kurdish people. We know that. He caused terrific genocide. If I did his job, I wouldn't have starved three million people to death. Xavier, how do you know that? And also remember how many people they sent into battle. How many millions lost their lives. Trump told the truth. You've changed your wiki. Scenic music. I don't know. I haven't been on there for a long time. I know that any vandals will get be getting a knock on the door from officialdom. I could tell you that. Scotty, you're a special person. Keep up the grind, my boy. La Hoop, so are you. Mr. Goatfish, thank you for my lovely TikToks. Can I say thank you to every TikToker for your beautiful kindness and your gifts and your intelligence? You know, there we go. Now, who have we got here? Thank you very much, Mr. Goatfish. As Mr. Goatface has sent me five TikToks. Bro, I honestly think Trump told the truth. Apparently, they did some study and found out that he was one of the most truthful people on the planet. Very interesting, yeah. Studied his speeches and that, you know. I think probably there's a, a a kind of more ethereal side to Donald Trump. Don't be fooled just by the mere mortal. Pitlochre, is that where the salmon is? Yes, the salmon ladder at Pitlochre. And you can visit the festival theatre. Y'all are blind, says Xavier. Xavier? In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. There we are. So, why did you vote for Brexit? Well, I didn't want Brexit. Brexit's the biggest act of self-harm since uh, the First World War. Your volume on the phone is low. Somebody else said that, Martin. It might be your kit. 950. Is it 950? 954. Europe has lorry driver shortages. I believe pays a gripe. Not Brexit, it used to be a good paying job. But didn't Churchill starve the Indians? I'm not sure I have something like that. Yes, he did. Uh, there we go. Uh, looking sharp, Scotty. Uh, by any chance, absolutely, Scotty McClue for president in 2024. Do you think Scotty McClue would make a good POTUS? I say. There we are. If Churchill tried to help the Indians, the ships would have been sunk. 
Uh, there we go. Come and join us, guys. You're my role model, says, who's that? Me. Hello. Hello, dinky do. Now, I think this is a wonderful way to gather the intellectual side of TikTok. Well done, Scotty. Not at all. Lovely to have you all with us. How amazing is this tremendous stuff. Right, we've got five minutes, just under five minutes. Coal fires were great. Good vibes, says Jerry. It would be good to have a real one again. You get the benefit of heat from logs twice. First from splitting and then from burning. I understand there's less CO2 from burning than rotting naturally. Well, we're needing more CO2 at the moment. Did you not find out there's a shortage of CO2? Orange man is bad, says Jim. Jordan, I love lino. It made a great fire with all the oil in it. So there we are. Very good, Jerry. Excellent stuff. Now, I'm going to have to dash in a couple of minutes. Now, who have we got here? What's happened to the lorry drivers? Well, there's just not enough of them. Get a grip, says Minke. Absolutely, you too, Minke. Who have we got here? Love all that. Thank you very much. If anybody wants to phone, then you'll need to be very, very quick. Um. What have we got here? Love the lino. Thank you for that. Bring back the linoleum for Kirkcaldy, says Jordan. We love that. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hiya, Scotty. It's me again. Ah, Glenn, well done. Well, you can use your second call. Nice one. Do you need to be phoning in more, Scotty? Yeah, I think they absolutely do, uh, you know, but uh, but that's good stuff that you've popped in. And um, I think people will get used to it. Remember, Glenn, we're only four weeks old. Definitely. And about two weeks of that was technical rehearsal. Yeah, it's just like talking to a, well, it's talking to a family member. Well, of course. Thank you for that, Glenn. Exactly. We've years, we? Yes, absolutely. Here's somebody asking an interesting one. Here's Dennis saying, what's your view on the communist revolutions of the 1920s in the UK? I would say they were a bit like a canary farting down a mine shaft. That's what I would say. But what I will say is that um, they were a backlash to the First World War. So it's probably good for the socialist movement, for the labour movement, which is probably why we got the labour movement. Poor old Winnie got kicked out after World War II. What do you think's best um, British uh, Prime Minister of all time then? All time? Yeah. Very difficult to say. It depends how you're judging them. You see, it depends how and on what you are judging them. See, I love John Major as a Prime Minister. The right wing will tell you Margaret Thatcher was the best prime minister of all time. Okay. The left wing will tell you she was an old bag. Yeah. You know, Possibly, yeah. what she did to the miners of Sheffield and Yorkshire. Different strokes for different folks. Different, different strokes for different folks. You see, Attlee was a very interesting prime minister. Macmillan. I'll tell you who probably was the best prime minister of all time. But he got stabbed in the back by Macmillan. Anthony Eden, but by the time he became Prime Minister, Churchill virtually had to be dragged out of office at the age of 80. You see? So Anthony had carried Churchill throughout the Second World War. He became Lord Avon, Anthony Eden. Very, very nice man, beautifully dressed. You still, to this day, they've got a hat called an Anthony Eden. I'm going to have to say bye-bye. To the TikTokers. Bye-bye, TikTokers. Hang on, Glenn. We love